Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at a slightly more complicated example illustrating the convolution operation. That is, in a previous video, we looked at a simple example illustrating the convolution operation. That is, the convolution sum has only one structure for all possible values of the discrete time index n. Here, in this example, we will look at a convolution sum that has different functional forms for different values of or the discrete time index n. So, given the input x of n equal to 1 for values of n between 0 and 4 and 0 elsewhere. And the impulse response h of n is equal to alpha power n for only values of n between 0 and 6 and the impulse response is 0 elsewhere. Note that the value of alpha lies between 0 and 1. We can clearly see that the convolution sum of this system for this given input can have different functional structures in the following intervals. The first interval is n is less than 0. That is, n is less than 0. And the second one is n is 0 to 4. This is n is between 0 and 4. And the third interval is for the values of n between 4 and 6. This is n between 4 and 6. And then we have the next interval between 6 and 10. This is for values of n between 6 and 10. And finally, we have n greater than 10. So, we have to calculate the convolution sum in each of these intervals separately. So, for the first interval that is for n less than 0, structure of x k is, is basically the same. That is, it has value equal to 1 for k equal to 0 to 4. And this value is 1. And h of n minus k is clearly equal to alpha power n minus k for values of between n minus 6 to n. Since the original h of n is given by alpha power n power for values of n between 0 and 6 and 0 elsewhere, h of n minus k is clearly given by alpha power n minus k for values of k between n minus 6 and n and 0 elsewhere. Now, for n less than 0, we have to look at what is the overlap between this structure x of k, that is this signal x of k, and this structure h of n minus k. So, clearly for n less than 0, the value of k for which h of n minus k is non-zero is always less than 0. That is, that there is no overlap. That is, x of k multiplied by h of n minus k for n less than 0 is always 0. Therefore, in the first interval, y of n is equal to 0 because h of n minus k is non zero only for values of k less than 0 since n is always less than 0. And for the second interval, that is for values of n between 0 and 4, 0 less than or equal to n less than 4, less than or equal to 4, again the structure x of k, that is the input, does not change. It has value equal to 1 for k equal to 0 to 4. Now, we have to look at the overlap with this structure of the function h of, of the signal h of n minus k or of the structure h of n minus k, which is again equal to alpha power n minus k per n minus 6 less than k less than n. When n minus 6 less than or equal to k, k less than or equal to n and 0 elsewhere. Now, we look at the product x of k h of n minus k and this product should be equal to alpha power n minus k. So, the difficult part is to find the exact intervals for the, or the actual interval for the value of k. So, for values of n between 0 and 4, the lower limit basically does not, the lower limit is always going to be 0 for k because the overlap is non-zero only for k greater than 0 and since for all values of n between 0 and 4, this is always less than 0. So, k is the lower limit is definitely going to be 0 or in other words, the lower limit does not cross the value 0. It is always 
less than 0. So, the value of k in the, in, in the overlap basically is always greater than 0 and the upper limit changes with the value of n. Therefore, the upper limit is still n because for n equal to 0, the upper limit is 0 and n equal to 4, the upper limit is 4. So, the upper limit is still n and the product is 0 elsewhere. Therefore, the output y of n is equal to the sum k equal to 0 to n alpha power n minus k. Now, by using r equal to n minus k, that is for k equal to 0, r is equal to n and for k equal to 1, n, r equal to 0. So, the sum becomes r equal to 0 to n, that is r equal to n to 0 or r equal to 0 to n alpha power r which is clearly equal to 1 minus alpha power n plus 1 over 1 minus alpha. And this is only valid for values of n between 0 and 4. Now, the next interval is 4 less than n less than or equal to 6. That is, we are looking at the third interval for values of n between 4 and 6. In this interval, the product x of k multiplied by h of n minus k is equal to Note that h of n minus k is equal to alpha power n minus k only for values of n, k between n minus 6 and n and 0 elsewhere. So, by using this definition, this one should be equal to alpha power n minus k. Here, the lower limit of k for the product x of k into h of n minus k is basically 0 irrespective of the value of n because for n equal to 4, it is minus 2 and n equal to 6 it is 0. So, the lower limit is always going to be 0 for k. The upper limit is basically fixed at 4 because for n equal to 4, upper limit is 4 and for n equal to 6, the upper limit is still 4 because x of k is 0 for k greater than 4. So, this is upper limit is fixed at 4 and the value is 0 elsewhere. Therefore, the output y of n for this interval is given by the sum k equal to 0 to 4 alpha power n minus k, which is equal to alpha power n into the sum k equal to 0 to 4 alpha power minus k, which is equal to alpha power n into 1 minus alpha power minus 1 power 5 divided by 1 minus alpha power minus 1. So, this is output y of n for values of n between 4 and 6. Now, let us look at the next interval 6 less than n less than or equal to 10. In this case, the product x of k into h of n minus k is equal to again alpha power n minus k for values of k between n minus 6 and 4 because for n equal to 6, the lower limit is, remember that the value of k lies between n and n minus 6 for the function h of n minus k. So, for n equal to 6, the lower limit is 0 and for n equal to 10, the lower limit is 4. So, the lower limit is going to change for different values of n. So, it should be n minus 6. And the upper limit does not change with the value of n because the value of n is always greater than 6, the upper limit should always be equal to 4 because k should always be less than 4. It cannot be greater than 4 for the overlap and the overlap is 0 elsewhere. Therefore, the sum y of n should be equal to k equal to n minus 6 to 4 alpha power n minus k. Now, by using r equal to k minus n plus 6, that is for k equal to n minus 6, r is equal to 0 and k equal to 4, r is equal to r is equal to 10 minus n. r is equal to 0 to 10 minus n alpha power and n minus k will be replaced by 6 minus r. So, this becomes alpha power 6 summation r equal to 0 to 10 minus n summation of alpha power minus r and this is equal to alpha power 6 into 1 minus alpha power minus 1 10 minus n plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha power minus and this is equal to alpha power 6 into 1 minus alpha power minus 1 power 11 minus n divided by 1 minus alpha power minus 1. 
and this is only valid for values of n between 6 and 10. Now let us look at the final interval n greater than 10. In this case, since values of k should be between n and n minus 6, and since n is always greater than 10, the overlap x of k into h of n minus k is equal to 0. Because for n greater than 10, the lower limit is always greater than 4. And the upper limit is obviously definitely greater than 4. So the overlap between x of k, which is a, the values from 0 to 4 and 0 everywhere else, which is x of k. The overlap between this x of k and the values of h of n minus k equal to alpha power n minus k for values of n minus 6 of k between n minus 6 and n and 0 elsewhere clearly the overlap between this signal and this impulse response is clearly equal to 0 for n greater than 10 because k is always greater than 4 here therefore for this interval output y of n is clearly equal to 0 for n greater than 10 therefore fi the final output y of n can be listed as false y of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 and the output is 1 minus alpha power n plus 1 by 1 minus alpha for values of n between 0 and 4 and the output is alpha power n into 1 minus alpha power minus 5 by 1 minus alpha power minus 1 for values of n between 4 and 6 and finally it is alpha power 6 into 1 minus alpha power n minus 11 by 1 minus alpha power minus 1 for values of n between 6 and 10 and 0 for n greater than 10. So, this structure basically gives the convolution output for y of n for different values of n or different intervals of or the discrete time index n. Thus, we can calculate the output y of n in different for different intervals of the discrete time index n when the overlap between the input x of k and h of n minus k changes with the value of n. Thanks for watching.